Hey everyone, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to episode 13 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Starting this week at Starbase, early Friday morning, SpaceX's LR-11000 crawler crane was moved to Pad A, which is set up for ship puck shucking. Later that morning, Ship 24 underwent some pressure testing. If you watch closely, you can see the dents disappear as the ship is pressurized. A short time later, a loud bang and depressurization sound followed by a shower of TPS tiles falling from the payload bay section of Starship seemed to indicate some kind of failure. That afternoon at the build site, the scrapping of SN-16 continued as its last remaining flap was removed. Around the same time, the new E-ring dome section, believed to be part of the new test tank, was lifted into mid-bay. Just a few hours later, however, the section was lifted back out. Back at the launch site, as crews were busy inspecting the damage from the morning's test, a section of bent piping was removed from Ship 24. That evening, the door of Tent 1 was open, allowing us to catch a glimpse of Booster 8's thrust section inside. Even as they were evaluating the earlier failed pressure test on Ship 24, SpaceX was moving forward with other testing. As night fell over Starbase, the new ship quick disconnect on the tower was observed extending and retracting several times. These are the first tests we have seen since this system was replaced to accommodate the higher connections on the newest generation of Starship. Overnight, work continued as the E-Dome section was again lifted into mid-bay. This time, it did not come back out. A while later, in the dome yard on the other end of Tent 1, Booster 9's thrust section was sleeved. At the launch site, crews worked to upgrade Test Stand B for the newest Starship. The old quick disconnect had already been removed. A replacement pipe was moved into Ship 24. This new pipe includes two thermal expansion loops. This change may indicate that thermal contraction in the piping caused the failure. Early Tuesday morning, a Raptor 2 engine was transported to Mega Bay for installation on Booster 7. In unrelated SpaceX news, that afternoon, the decommissioned aircraft carrier USS Kitty Hawk, which was the Navy's last diesel-powered aircraft carrier, was towed into the shipping channel on its way to the Port of Brownsville, where it sadly will be scrapped. Around that same time, during a break in repairs on Ship 24, Venting was seen coming from its methane tank. At the build site, the Raptor truck arrived empty but was quickly loaded with boxes and Raptor transport stands. While crews worked repairing the internal piping on Ship 24, other workers were busy outside preparing the ship for the installation of additional heat shield tiles. Also that afternoon, one of SpaceX's two robotic dogs was taken for a walk around the launch complex. SpaceX can use these robots to inspect areas which are not safe for humans. Back at the build site, Booster 8's thrust section was moved from Tent 1 to the front of High Bay. On the other side of the tents, Ship 25's nose cone was rolled out of Tent 3 and placed in front of the windbreak. After a brief stop in the doorway, Booster 8's thrust section was moved into High Bay. That evening, it was observed that the load spreader was disconnected from Booster 7 in Mega Bay. Later that night, crews were seen welding and working on the new tower piping that runs to the QD arm. Early Wednesday morning, Booster 8's partial lock section was connected to the bridge crane in High Bay. The locks tank was then stacked on the thrust section briefly before being removed. Apparently having some issues getting everything properly aligned, the section was stacked and removed multiple times. Eventually, however, things lined up properly and stacking of the locks tank was complete. A short time later, a two-ring dome section was moved to the ring yard and parked in front of mid-bay. Crews were also busy preparing for the final push in the scrapping of Ship 16 in the ring yard. First, with a crane holding the top of the tank section, the thrust section was cut off the bottom. Work continued in this manner as the ship was slowly cut into smaller pieces. Late Wednesday, the first grid fin was lifted for installation on Booster 7 in Mega Bay. A few hours later, a Raptor 2 was spotted on its way to Booster 7 for installation. With destacking complete, the first of Ship 16 pieces left the ring yard and rolled down Remedios Avenue on its way to the scrap yard. A short time later, a crane took another section of Ship 16 to join the first. And in just a few hours, the final remains had all been moved to the scrap yard. 
Also early Thursday morning, back in Mega Bay, a second grid fin was lifted and installed on Booster 7. Work continued at the gate across from Rover 2 and VR cameras as additional concrete was removed from behind the container wall. Early Thursday morning, the Raptor truck returned. As the cover was pulled back, we saw that two new Raptors had arrived at Starbase. The rapid pace of development at Starbase means equipment is always moving around, like this Grove Crane that relocated to the launch site. Meanwhile, the rear hood of the booster quick disconnect was moved from the launch site to the crane yard. Yet another new building is going up. This one next to the crane yard appears to be significantly taller than the other buildings in the area. During the initial stages of testing Thursday, Rovercam caught what appears to be an all-hands meeting of the Starbase employees. While we haven't heard anything official about the reason for the meeting, the time of it has led to speculation that it could be related to the upcoming release of the Programmatic Environmental Assessment from the FAA. Back at the launch site, following a week of repairs, Ship 24 was seen venting as a new round of testing began. As testing progressed, a loud pop was again heard. Fortunately this time, it seems it was not associated with a failure. A short time later, Ship 24's cryotest began as liquid nitrogen was pumped into the ship's tanks. Both the LOX and methane tanks were fully filled with cryogenics during this test. It seems SpaceX may have been running other tests in parallel as venting was also seen from the orbital launch mount. Eventually, Ship 24 was detanked after a successful cryotest. After the road was reopened, however, we did not see pad activity return to normal. Throughout the night, the launch site seemed to remain mostly closed and dark, and the orbital launch mount vented continuously. It is unknown if this was due to some kind of issue with the tank farm, or if it was some kind of new test from SpaceX. But by the next morning, however, things seemed to be back to normal at the launch site. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Make sure you subscribe and hit the alert bell for new video notifications and live streams. And don't forget to leave us a comment and let us know what you think. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.